the shift from Munster, I thought you were from Bonn, but uh, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, who will talk? Okay, thank you very much, Edgar. First, I would like to thank the organizing committee and the program uh, committee for this great conference. Um, so, uh, oh, I think it's. Is it on? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's on. It's on quiet. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, as I mentioned, the um, perfect set uh, theorem for analytic sets in ZFC. So I guess the point of my talk is that this um, uh, may completely fail if you replace uh, the bare space omega to the omega by kappa to the kappa. So this is the, the first idea. Um, so there are two topics, perfect sets and super perfect sets. Uh, so uh, the second topic is joint work with Philip Lücke and Luca Motoros. And I've given variations of this talk before. So <laughs> I apologize to people who've heard that before. Uh, so uh, what's the basic question? I will first talk about perfect sets and then super perfect sets. So we want to replace the bare space now by kappa to the kappa. So kappa is some uncountable cardinal. Um, so the basic question people ask about uh, which dichotomies generalize, for example, the perfect set property, which in DFC holds for analytic sets. Uh, the Burevich <coughs> dichotomy, which is the analog for super perfect sets. Uh, super perfect sets given by a super perfect tree, and it's a tree which is uh, kappa branching. So it's um, so every node um, there are cofinally many nodes in the tree which have kappa many direct successors. That's a super perfect tree in the cap context of kappa. And then a related question is um, regularity properties. Um, for example, measurability associated to a tree forcing. And there are very various w uh, ways to define this, which we'll see. And so for the context, um, we always assume kappa is, uh, satisfies kappa to less than kappa is kappa to be a, uh, in analogy with omega. And the generalized bare space is just a sequence of functions from kappa to kappa, where um, uh, a basic open set is given by um, information of size less than kappa. And then the, um, the closed set, the closed subset of the space are given by trees. Okay, and then um, okay. So if you collapse an inaccessible, uh, inaccessible, then for the bare space, but first of all in DFC, every analytic set has the perfect set property. If you collapse an inaccessible to omega one, then well, all definable sets, all sets definable from omega sequence of ordinals have the perfect set property by Solovey. And the, for example, one question is: uh, Is this true when you now replace omega by some larger kappa? And there's an obstacle to this proof. Um, that I'll explain in a second. So what are the definitions I said? Uh, so super closed. Uh, so what's the analog to a perfect tree or perfect set? So we want the tree to be um, to be closed under ascending sequences. So we want we look at trees where you have a sequence of nodes in the tree, then uh, and then the union of those nodes is again in the tree. And uh, we want the trees to be perfect. So above every node, there is a node that that has at least two direct su successors. Uh, so let's say. Well, let's call this a super closed tree if it's closed under ascending sequences. Okay. Um, so basically, super closed tree is the analog to tree in this context, or one analog, obviously. And then, if nu is any cardinal, we look at nu splitting trees. It means that um, um, oh, a node is nu splitting if its direct successors there are at least nu many. And we say trees. Oh, sorry, trees new perfect if um, if it's super closed and they're um, let's see, they're cofinally in the tree. There are cofinal many nodes that are new splitting. So if you look at two for 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 uh, uh, new equals two, these are just the perfect trees. And for new equals kappa, these are super. Per let's call them super perfect trees or kappa Miller trees. So um, this is the tree we look at. Sorry. Uh, so it means above every node, there is a node which has at least kappa many direct successors. Okay. So then, if you generalize the want to generalize the perfect set property, uh, so this is the obstacle clearly. So um, the it's uh, if you just look at Solovey's proof, it doesn't go through because uh, the the forcings doesn't fact don't factor properly. So you can, um, for example, if you add a subset to omega one, a cone subset to omega one, and you uh, you shoot a club through it. Then, um, well, that two-step iteration is again just just adds a cone subset to omega one, 
but the second factor is, is very bad. It, uh, it destroys stationary sets. <coughs> so this means that there, there are lots of different, if you're looking at, uh, for example, um, you go to an extension with this four thing and you look at, inside you look at some cone subsets of omega-1 over the ground model. There, there are many different quotient four things that could appear. So this is, uh, this is a difficulty in this context. And um, I want to, uh, I would like to sketch how to overcome this in this proof, with this proof. So let's say the perfect set property means that, um, let's call this PSP, kappa, um, says if we have any subset of kappa to the kappa that's definable from a kappa sequence of ordinals, then um, this has the perfect set property, meaning <coughs> it's the set either is, has size at, uh, um, at most kappa or kappa has a perfect subset and the perfect subset is given by a perfect tree. Okay, and then um, so, well, analogous to omega, actually, well, when you uh, when you collapse an inaccessible, then this perfect set property holds. And I would like to sketch the argument also. But first, some remarks about this. So, um, so there's this um, very important notion of regularity property associated to a tree forcing. Uh, so, if, if you have any tree forcing like uh, Sachs forcing, Miller forcing, and so on. Uh, there is a canonical way to associate a regularity property to it. Um, for example, in work by Daisuke Kikami, this was done. And, um, and then, uh, so Yuri Komsky and others generalized this to the, to the setting of kappa. Uh, I mean, the definitions uh, generalized in a straightforward forward way. And um, so what is the relationship with this? So the, there, there's a difference because, because when you consider the four things, you always consider, um, for example, uh, we want to look at the analog of sex forcing for um, for omega one or for kappa. Then um, the the conditions of the forcing are not um, just perfect trees, but uh, you put the extra condition that the set of uh, splitting nodes in the tree T is closed. So if you have a if you have a sequence of uh, uh, increasing splitting nodes in the tree in the forcing, the uh, the union of that uh, uh, you have a union on, uh, node on top of that. This should also be a splitting node. So I think. Uh, this was first done in a paper by Kanamori for sex forcing quite long ago. Uh, for, for forcing, this is the right um, notion. But these are different trees, so you get different regularity properties and different uh, something different. And in this case, I just want to remark that if you look at the, for example, the analog to the perfect set property, this is, um, <coughs> this is easily false. So we have to be very careful in this context. So we had, there are two ways to look, at, two ways to define these, the analog to a perfect tree. So one one is the uh, type of tree that I defined, and the other one is uh, comes from the forcing, and they're completely different results. Okay. Uh, so now, then it follows from this that if you we look at the Kappa Chang model, which uh, is the least model of uh, ZF, which contains all Kappa sequences of ordinals. Um, then in this extension, uh, you, you collapse an inaccessible to kappa plus, and then every subset um, in the extension, all the subsets of kappa to the kappa in the Chang model will have the perfect set property. That's corollary. And another result, uh, let's see. Um, okay, well, I mean, the perfect, the perfect, um, Perfect subset property can be characterized by a game. So, so when you have the perfect set property, uh, the uh, appropriate game is determined. So, in this extension, we've also shown that uh, a certain game is determined, <coughs> which is quite interesting. So, we have more determinacy than in ZFC. And um, another result proved in almost the same way is that, um, in again, if you collapse an inaccessible to kappa uh, plus, and you have a, an extension, you have a function on the kappa bare space, uh, and the function is definable from a, sequ a kappa sequence of ordinals, then uh, we can, then th there is a perfect set, and the restriction of the function to this perfect set is continuous. Okay, this is another result which you get in the same way. Uh, and I want to mention that from a uh, maximality principle, you can get a similar conclusion. Um, so, what's the maximality principle? I'm not sure. I think it was um, defined by Joel Hemkins. 
Mm. So we have we, we fix a certain class of four things gamma, and we fix a set of parameters. In this case, let's just say h mu uh, for some cardinal mu. So the maximality principle says that if you have any statement c with parameters in this parameter set, and suppose this has the property that you can um, you can force c to be true in some extension so that it remains true in all further extensions as well, then it was already true in the ground model. And um, let's look at the, since we here work with the Levy collapse, let's, let's look at a certain class of collapse for things and the associated maximality principle. So we take uh, cardinals mu, which are sufficiently close um, in this definition. We take the collapse for things, uh, collapsing a cardinal mu to, these cardinals mu to kappa plus. So then the, the maximality principle associated to, for these four things is consistent. So Gunther Fuchs showed that if you have, um, so kappa is again a regular cardinal. Uh, you have this uh, regular cardinal delta uh, above kappa so that v delta is elementary in v. And you collapse delta to kappa plus, then this maximality principle holds. Okay? And we can uh, also this, but this principle also implies the perfect set property for, um, in this case, for the sets which are definable from a subset of kappa. Okay, any questions? Uh, so I would like to give a proof sketch of uh, this result. So, so the problem was the factoring that I mentioned here. And um, so let's see how we can overcome it. So what we're going to do is we um, uh, we're going to add um, a tree by forcing. Uh, so if you add a cone, um, if you add a cone wheel, you also add a perfect set of cone uh, of cone wheels. So we want to do the same thing here. Uh, you can you can just add a um, perfect tree um, by w we add a, um, um, a perfect subtree of two to the less than kappa by conditions of size less than kappa. This will, in a similar way, give us a, um, a perfect tree of height kappa, so that all the branches all the branches to that tree are going to be uh, cone subsets of kappa over the ground model. And in fact, so two of them will be mutually generic. And if we do this in the right way, we can uh, control the factors of the forcing. That's what this forcing is going to do. So for notation L just denotes the length of, um, of a sequence. And if you have a, that's part one. It's the length of a sequence of a node in the tree. Uh, if we have a set of nodes, uh, for example, this will be a condition. A condition in the forcing gives you a, um, a little piece of the tree that we want to force. Um, and the length of that is defined as the, the super of the length of all its elements. And the forcing conditions are of the form as in three. They're going to be pairs. So we just uh, force with initial, um, with approximation to this tree. So the little t is an approximation to the tree that we want to add by forcing. and um, so then we have the subset f, f in the condition, and this is going to tell you which nodes are, um, let's see, are not splitting. Right, so f is just determines the set of non-splitting nodes. Okay, so the first thing just adds um, by approximation a, um, um, a perfect set tree, uh, a t, a perfect set, perfect tree t, and the little s is going to give you the set of non-splitting nodes. Okay, so, um, the way this is defined in the forcing is, uh, so T is this approximation to the, uh, the tree that we force. And um, we want this to be at, at most binary branching tree. That's condition three. And we want that the, for the nodes U and S, um, any node U and S can have at most one successor. So you cannot split an S. This is condition four. Okay, it's quite quite simple way to add such a tree. Any questions? Um, also, you can note that this tree is going, this forcing has size kappa, and it's less than kappa close to actually, it's equivalent to just adding a cone subset of kappa. Let's see how we can use this forcing. So, um, take the generic filter and we look at all the first coordinates in the of the conditions in the generic filter, the little t. So, if we union them up, we're going to get this tree. Let's call it tg. And let's take a name t dot for that tree. 
<coughs> and this tree generates the generic extension. Okay? And then it's quite easy to show that um, if you look at two distinct branches in this tree, there so each of them is um, is generic for um, the first thing that adds a cone subset of kappa, and moreover the pair of them is generic for the product forcing. This is just a calculation. So we've added a tree of a perfect tree of mutually generic uh, cone subset of kappa. Okay. Uh, now, how about the factors we want to compute? We want to take some branch in this tree and we want to calculate the, the quotient forcing to that. Uh, to do this, first, um, we look in conditions which determine the... Um, let's take a name for a branch. Let's call this uh, B dot. So in the generic extension, we want to take some branch in the tree. So now we take a name B dot for it. And uh, for any condition, we can look at the part of B that is already decided by that condition. So remember, the, the condition is... Uh, a tree smaller than kappa with a set of non-splitting nodes in T. And we don't know how much of this branch P decides, but it can only decide the uh, br branch up to the height of uh, that tree. That's also quite easy to show. That's the slammer. So the, you, cannot, uh, you cannot decide if a condition has length, um, let's see. Uh, so the, the branch, so this is the part of the B dot that is decided by P. Um, uh, okay, let's say this has height delta. Then delta has to be, can be at most the height of the tree T in this condition here. So that's what the lemma says. If you have um, a part of the branch that's decided, then um, this is already in T. So, so the delta by this property, the delta can be at most the height of the tree T. Okay. And we want to look at uh, a dense set of conditions, uh, those which decide the branch up to the height of the condition. So we have condition TF. T has a certain height. And it, it's, uh, this condition decides the branch up to the height, uh, the same height. And we <coughs> easy to see that this is a, um, a dense subset of the forcing. Uh, this we need to compute the quotient. And I just want to sketch the idea how to compute the, the quotient. Okay, so again, the situation if we have this, we add this perfect tree, we take a branch and we want to know what is the quotient forcing for that. And to compute that, we um, modify P a bit, we expand it a little bit so that we can, uh, we can do this calculation. So this is the forcing Q, which is going to be equivalent to P. So Q is this, just take all the conditions P in this dense set and add in the first coordinate, add this piece of the branch that is already decided. Um, and you get a forcing that's equivalent to uh, the original forcing P. Okay. I mean, this is, uh, this is ordered. Of course, in the second coordinate, we order like uh, P. Here we order by um, reverse inclusion. Um, that's this. And uh, so the then we're going to have a subforcing of this, which, which is Q0. And this is just going to add the, the branch itself. So we want to look at a subforcing which, um, uh, which adds the branch. And then we would want to compute the quotient. So let's divide the forcing into this part, which just gives you the branch. And then we have um, Q1 is just, let's see. OK, Q1 is the re remaining part of Q. And then, uh, of course, this condition is stronger than this one, so therefore Q1, uh, uh, Q1 is going to be dense in Q. And clearly, uh, clearly these maps are isomorphism. So if you look at, um, so what we did here, we just add, we take condition P and D, and we just add um, this information of the, uh, about the branch. So the map which maps P to this condition is an isomorphism. And also, the if you look at the, this forcing is just the same forcing as adding a cone subset of kappa because it's ordered by inclusion. Okay, so uh, so now we already see that the, um, um, the first part of the forcing adds a cone subset of kappa. Um, see, well, p is equivalent to q. We just add a little bit of information to every condition. And so we need this lemma here to um, 
we want to show that Q0 is a complete subforcing of Q, and it's uh, easy to calculate using this lemma here that I guess I can skip. Uh, well, okay, why not? So we have, um, we have this condition, and we have some condition where in Q0, meaning the second coordinate is 1, and this one extends the first condition, then you can easily see that um, these two are compatible because you can add the piece of Q, the piece of BQ that is above BP here. You can just add it on top of the BQ, and you can see that that is the condition in Q. And that easily shows that Q0 is a complete subforcing. So, so this shows that the Q0 adds a, which adds the branch, and this is equivalent to a Cohen subset of kappa. Okay. Uh, and now, what about the quotient? Will the quotient um, take any <coughs> branch, take any generic filter for this forcing? And um, let's say we have a name for a branch again. Okay, name for branch meaning means there's a condition forcing this is a branch in this generic tree. And then the quotient, uh, so the whole, whole forcing Q is, is equivalent to adding a cone subset of kappa. And uh, the subforcing Q0 also adds a cone subset of, of kappa, and the slammer says that the quotient forcing is also equivalent to that. And this we can just calculate from, uh, well, it's a, it's a calculation that we can do. Okay, so uh, this is what you need in the proof. So now I can sketch, uh, wanted to sketch the idea of this perfect set property. So this is just the essential step once you have this. We can now show uh, the perfect set property similar to Solovey's proof, same idea. Um, so we want to, we have some regular cardinal kappa. We have an inaccessible cardinal lambda above kappa. And we do a Levy collapse. And the claim is then the perfect set property holds for all sets that are definable from kappa sequences of ordinals in that extension. OK. So um, here's the argument. Suppose you have a, oops, <laughs> you have a set, um, definable set A. So it's given, defined by a formula phi and some parameter y, which is a kappa sequence of ordinals. Uh, let's just write a phi for this. So a phi means the, the set uh, obtained by applying the definition phi with a parameter y. And in this case, we want to apply it in, uh, in the extension vg. So let's call the set a here. And we trying to show mm -hmm. that a, this a has the perfect set property here. Okay. So a is just any and he said definable from a kappa sequence of ordinals. Uh, we have two cases. So if either kappa is small, well, that's one of the case. If, um, sorry, A, either A has size at most kappa, uh, and if A has size kappa plus, then we want to construct a, a perfect subset. So how do we do this? Mm, well, first of all, you can find, um, well, if in the extension A has size kappa plus, then there have to be more and more elements added um, when you collapse more and more. Uh, because otherwise the set, uh, the set is small. So there is some mu. Uh, so that when you collapse mu in the extension, that already adds you a new element of A. That's what this says. So there is some uh, mu which we can choose to be sufficiently closed here. So that collapsing mu already adds a new element of A. That's clear. Okay, now. Uh, let's take, um, so this is the extension with, with a collapse including mu, so this collapses mu as well. Uh, and this over this extension, um, so the quotient to the whole extension is just a collapse, but now we want to add, first add a cone subset of kappa, and then after that to the Levy collapse and see what happens. <coughs> um, so why do we do that? Because the, the thing is, if you add, over this thing, you add a cone subset of kappa, it's the same as doing another uh, collapse of mu because the, the collapse forcing for mu in here has size kappa and is less than kappa closed. So, so what's going on here is just the same as um, doing a call kappa mu extension again. Um, and by, but in this situation here, we know that if you collapse mu, 
then you're going to add a new element of A. So the same thing is going to happen here. Um, yeah, so because this is because of this assumption, uh, this is forced over V, and then this also host has to hold in this extension. So uh, we know that let's see, this should be mu plus. But because of this assumption here, and this is the same type of forcing, uh, in this VG also there is a new element of A. Okay, And also these two are um, disjoint because they're mutually generic. So what's going on here is that if over we have this intermediate extension and we add just the concept set of kappa, we're going to add a new element of A here. Uh, that's all we need because now over this extension we add this perfect tree, perfect set, and uh, we know that all the elements of this perfect set are cone subsets of kappa. So this is like the, the G here. Um, we know by, by this property now that there is a new element of A when you force, when you add this cone subset over here. Uh, so we have a sigma, name sigma for a new element. Um, so we add, now we add just a perfect tree of these cone subsets of kappa. That's what he does. And afterwards, we, uh, we do the Levy collapse. And now what happens is that is in this intermediate extension of G bar, you have, well, you have this perfect set. And every, uh, each of these sets gives you an interpretation of sigma. And all that of them factor properly. And therefore, um, this is going to be a perfect subset of A. OK, any questions about this proof sketch? OK, I would like to move to the super perfect set. So I mean, this, um, this result begs the question, what happens to the super perfect set? So there's a well-known uh, classical dichotomy result for the super perfect sets and trees. It was proved by Hurevich. Um, first of all, Polish spaces. So he showed that he characterized the Polish spaces, which are not k-sigma, meaning so k-sigma means that the space is a union of countably many compact sets. and um, so he characterized those spaces as um, the spaces, polar spaces, which have a closed subset that is homeomorphic to the bare space. OK? So, uh, so if you have the set homeomorphic to the bare space, then clearly the space is not k sigma, because uh, omega to the omega is not k sigma. And uh, he proved that it's uh, an if and only if, and it's a very short proof. It's a few line proof. And then this was extended in various ways, for example, um, was proved by Kekris and saint -Ramon that uh, if you take any sigma 1, 1 subset of a polar space, X, uh, so the sigma 1, 1 set is A. Um, this, this theorem generalizes. So um, we, look at, we want to look at the sets A which do not contain a, uh, sorry, which are not covered by a K sigma <coughs> set. And these are uh, the properties is, is equivalent to the property that there is a closed subset of A, which is homeomorphic to the bare space. <coughs> okay. uh, so this is like a similar dichotomy as the um, perfect set property. And there, I guess there are many more dichotomies that you could look at in this context of kappa to the kappa as well. Uh, so Kecker has also generalized this to uh, two projective sets. For example, assume we're I'm not sure maybe to using determinacy, maybe to all sets of reals. Uh, so the question that we asked in joint work with Philip Lücke and Luca Motoros is, uh, we want to generalize uh, this theorem to kappa to the kappa. And um, so again, it turns out that if it's independent, and first we need to see what are the right definitions. So K sigma, um, so K sigma means it's, it's uh, the union of countably many compact sets. So the analog of a contact compact set here is kappa compact. Uh, so kappa compact, I think also called kappa Lindelöf, uh, means that if you have any open cover of that set, there is a subcover of size less than kappa. So if kappa is omega, this is just compactness, and it's a direct general, uh, generalization. And then let's call k, let's say k, k kappa for the uh, union of um, uh, of kappa many kappa compact sets. Okay, 
and um, a set uh, subset of kappa to the kappa is said to satisfy the Hurevich dichotomy if uh, one of two cases holds either what A is covered by a K kappa set or A has a closed subset which is hom homeomorphic to kappa to the kappa. So this the statement is the direct analog of the statement here, of the this theorem here. Right? So in these words this theorem says all sigma one one subsets of positive spaces satisfy the Hurevich dichotomy for omega. So now you can ask uh, what happens for kappa to the kappa. Do all sigma one one subsets of kappa to the kappa uh, satisfy the Hurevich dichotomy? And um, there are various ways in this can be uh, in which this can be forced. It, um, so there is a, a a nice pose set which is uh, kappa plus cc and less than kappa closed, which forces this dichotomy. So if you take any regular cardinal kappa, you can force this uh, dichotomy. And moreover, this can be done globally. So there's a class forcing which um, it's an iteration <coughs> which wi in which you iterate the forcings used for this step. And you, um, uh, you can preserve, well, we start from a model of GCH and then force this dichotomy at all uh, all regular kappa, and you can preserve cough, uh, we preserve cough analogies and several large cardinals. Okay, so it's this force is the Hurwitz dichotomy. Okay, um, so then of course there's a question in which models is this dichotomy false? So it's also uh, how do you force it to be false? How do you force the dichotomy to be false? So one way to do this is to uh, to add a um, a cone subset of mu, so mu some cardinal below kappa, which with mu to the left and mu is mu, and we add a cone subset of mu. Um, so when after doing this, we add this x, then the Hurwitz dichotomy fails for kappa. So we have kappa and we have the smaller mu. We add a cone subset <coughs> to mu, and then the dichotomy fails. And the reason is because the um, so the counterexample is the is just the kappa to the kappa of the ground model in this case. So I might say something about the proof if I have time. And also in V equals L, in so in L also the uh, dichotomy fails. And uh, so even for closed sets. Okay. So I will say want to say a little bit about. Um, some basic steps um, how this is proved. So let's say a tree is proved, uh, pruned. So I'm talking about this, uh, let's say, so this result here. How do we force the Hurwitz dichotomy? Uh, so I just want to give you a few um, ideas how, how this is proved and um, the basic properties of these sets. So let's work with pruned trees. So pruned, uh, a tree is pruned if above every node there's a co branch to the tree. Uh, this is the analog to trees without n nodes. And then, so first there are some quite interesting observations that were made a long time ago about these, um, about these sets. So suppose you have a weakly compact cardinal, then uh, the space 2 to the kappa is kappa compact. Mm. And this is an uh, this is an if and only if. Uh, so because if kappa is not weakly compact, then the space is actually homeomorphic to kappa to the kappa. <coughs> and well, kappa to the kappa is, is not uh, is not um, kappa compact because if you take any node and you take um, well, or, uh, you you split up into kappa many disjoint basic open sets, and this cover you can never refine to a small sub cover. So if you have a tree which has um, one node with kappa many direct successors, then that tree does not give you a, um, a kappa comp compact set. And then, well, the question is, are these exactly the trees that are give you a kappa compact set? And that also depends on whether kappa is weakly compact or not. So here's one very nice observation as well that uh, characterizes the trees uh, with which give you a kappa compact set. So the, these trees are exactly the trees that are kappa trees, so all the levels are smaller than kappa, and the tree does not have any kappa iron, iron giant subtrees. It's quite a nice observation. 
Uh, so, I mean, this is um, easy to prove. For example, well, suppose you have a tree with a kappa R and subtree Y. Is the set not kappa compact because you can take uh, you you can take the nodes on the boundary of the tree? Let's see. So say we have this this iron giant tree T here, and you take the boundary of the tree. T. So these are the nodes that are not in T, but everything before is in T. So so all initial segments of S are in T, but S itself is not in T. This is the boundary. And if you look at the um, uh, basic open set attached here, we have a cover of the of 2 to the kappa. We have a cover of T with kappa many sets, and they're disjoint, so you cannot refine that. So that's not kappa compact. So these are co some quite nice ideas. Uh, and then uh, let's see. And this is uh, the compactness is rela related to the property that you can find a um, element of kappa to the kappa that bounds the set. Meaning, um, it's a function that is pointwise above every mm -hmm. element of the set. So if a, for example, uh, if a is contained in a kappa compact uh, uh, um, set, then a has to be bounded. That's because the, if you look at the, for example, the tree for a closed set, the levels have to be small. And then on each level, the supremum of the ordinals appear and gives you the function that bounds. That's part one, sorry. And, um, um, okay, so similarly now, if A is contained in a K-kappa K -kappa set, so we have kappa many kappa compact sets, then for each of these, you find this bound. And um, we can diagonalize against that to find an eventual bound for the whole set. So, so if A is contained in a K kappa, uh, K -kappa set, then uh, A is eventually bounded by some function. And if this is can be reversed if, if kappa is weakly compact. Okay. So these are some basic uh, properties you need for proving the dichotomy in the extension. Also, for example, about the perfect set property, the following are equivalent. So the perfect set property says, uh, well, can be formulated in various ways. You can ask um, that there is a perfect subset. You can ask that uh, there is a, that's equivalent to one. There is a tree, a perfect tree, whose set of branches is, um, is contained in the set. You can ask there, there's a continuous injection from two to the kappa into the set, for example. These are all equivalent. This is quite useful. Um, and the analog uh, analogous property for the super perfect trees is this. So let's say we have um, we're looking at the set of branches of a uh, certain tree T. Um, so a kappa Miller tree is a tree that um, is a super perfect tree. It's the same. Uh, so above every node, there's a kappa splitting node. And suppose uh, we have a subtree, uh, kappa Miller subtree of this given tree uh, T. Then, well, this is always uh, homeomorphic to kappa to the kappa because the tree is essentially the same. And if kappa is weakly compact, this holds conversely. So if you have, um, say, kappa is weakly compact and we have um, a tree T, and let's say that this the set of branches of T contains a closed set which is homeomorphic to kappa to the kappa, then we can also con uh, construct a super perfect subtree of T okay. if kappa is weakly compact. So uh, if kappa is non-weakly compact, this is false because um, uh, because then for t you can both put two to the kappa because in that case two to the kappa is uh, homeomorphic to kappa to the kappa. So then this is false. Um, okay, let's see. Um, so we can get some cons consequences for uh, regularity properties. So as I mentioned earlier, there. Um, there are at least two ways to define the regularity properties. So the w uh, there's the one we used here. And then using that definition, using the super perfect trees and kappa Miller trees that we looked at, um, let's say that, for example, a set is kappa Miller measurable if, um, if you take any kappa Miller tree, you can shrink it to a smaller kappa Miller tree, meaning a super perfect tree, which is either disjoint from the set or which is inside the set. 
and you can do the same for any types of trees. <coughs> um, so this is the property we look at here, and then it also follows that um, it's consistent that these properties hold for all sigma one one sets. This was also proved independently by Yuri and others, I think, Yuri Komsky. And also they look at, um, so as I said, there's this different type of regularity property where instead of these uh, these trees here, the I mean these are just perfect trees, you look at the trees that are used for the cap, uh, uh, the kappa sex for thing, so with the set of splitting nodes is closed, and then uh, you get completely different regularity properties. So just to warn you that in that case, um, the regularity properties, analog analogous to the one defined here, uh, they just fail for provably for sigma one one sets. Okay. Um, I was going to say something about the proof. Well, so the proof uses kappa heckler forcing. It's the analogous, as the the obvious analog to um, to heckler forcing for omega. But now we want to add um, an element of kappa to the kappa, which bounds everything in the ground model. So this is well known, well known forcing, which uh, in the first coordinate um, is an initial segment of this function that we want to force. <coughs> and um, you have this reservoir of, uh, of elements in the ground model that you have to dominate. Okay. And then you can look at a technical condition. Uh, and this is the crucial lemma in the proof that, um, so we want to iterate, um, let's see, we want to iterate the heckler forcing in kappa plus many steps. Um, okay, so there's a case distinction whether the kappa is weakly compact or not, and you have also have to be careful whether after forcing kappa remains weakly compact or not. So the two different things, two different forcings you have to apply, and one of them is the heckler forcing here. Uh, and this is the crucial lemma that um, allows us to prove that in that iterated forcing you get the Hurwitz dichotomy, um, which I guess I'm going to skip. But, well, the result is this, that um, so you iterate Heckler forcing in kappa plus many steps. Uh, and suppose ca after doing that, kappa is weakly compact, then the Hurwitz dichotomy is true. So there are many cases that, <coughs> um, well, maybe kappa uh, was weakly compact, and then you do this forcing, it's not weakly compact, or it wasn't weakly compact in the first case. And there's a different forcing that does this, where um, the idea is you take um, a set in the ground model, and you um, you make this into a k kappa set in the extension. Uh, that's this forcing here. Let me just quickly explain the idea. So. Uh, we want to build um, the forcing is supposed to build a k kappa set, so it's going to build kappa many trees. And um, let's see. Uh, so this coloring is give uh, gives you the various trees. <coughs> so this uh, the value of this function is uh, tells you which trees we're in, and we have certain trees. And in the end, the these trees we will union up to trees in the generic extension, which are going to uh, the union of those. Uh, set of branch of the tree is going to be equal to A, uh, so that A is a k-kappa set. So what's going on here is that if kappa is not weakly compact, and and we iterate this forcing with length kappa plus, then we can force the Hurwitz dichotomy at kappa. Okay, and then this can be combined somehow with the other forcing, which I now skipped, to get the uh, to get the global result. Um, okay, so let let me just any question. Okay, yes. Do you know which weekly compact cardinal survives the beta iteration? Mm, I haven't thought about or it. Or if it happens at all. Uh, uh, well, over L they do. I, oh, so they as well as they destroy recompactness, and you can if if uh, I mean kappa could be indestructibly weakly compact, then they preserve. But I guess you're asking about the characterization somehow. Yeah. Right? <coughs> oh, I see. Um, yes, for example, in L, if you look at the second one in L, um, we, you're always going to destroy the weak compactness. Oh, let's see, at least of the weak, least weakly compact cardinal. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so over, over L, you can, we can also force the Hurwitz dichotomy. Uh, and 
this forcing actually separates the reverse dichotomy from the perfect set property as we force over L. So, uh, so and I want to connect. We talked about the perfect sets and the super perfect set, and this theorem uh, separates the two properties. Okay, and for the 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 first one, we need an inaccessible. For example, here we don't. Um, also, if you look at the analog to the Solovey model again, this dichotomy holds. That's this this theorem, and it works by the same technique as before. Um, I guess, so I mentioned that uh, the rivet dichotomy and the perfect set property can fail. So, um, I mean, here's uh, something about the proof, but I will skip this. But, um, so what you can do is you can add a cone subset to some cardinal mu below kappa here. And the crucial thing is that, um, that if you look at any tree in the generic extension, uh, if you look at any perfect tree in that extension, this, uh, the branches of this tree can never be contained in the ground model. So that's somehow a very interesting question that for Omega was answered, um, I think, by Groshek and Slayman and independent by Wooden or not sure. Uh, so for Omega, this is not possible for any forcing. If you, uh, so if you force, oh, what's the result? If you force with any forcing, um, you can, you, I think you never add a perfect tree on a, a phi omega um, so that the set of its branches is con completely contained in the ground model. Very nice result. And for omega 1, this is not known. This is this question. So can you add, uh, can you add this perfect tree, which lies in the extension, but its branches are all in the ground model? I see. Uh, so anyway, for this forcing, that works. Slema says that. And now what we can do is we add this subset of mu. And the set, which is the counterexample to the Horovitch dichotomy, is just the kappa to the kappa of the ground model. And this lemma tells you that it does not have a perfect subset. That's the one direction. Okay, so just uh, I have to prove the other direction, which I leave out. Um, yeah, so just stating the same again, if you add, for example, a cone wheel, you, we destroy the, the Horovitch dichotomy <coughs> everywhere. Um, and in L, there's a counterexample, which I'm going to skip. And so let me just end with two uh, interesting open questions. So the the result about perfect sets just talks about all definable sets. Definable meaning definable from a kappa sequence of ordinals. And the result about super perfect sets only talks about sigma one one sets. And we don't yet know if um, this can be done for uh, other definable sets. That's the first question. Um, and the second question is, what about, yeah, it's related, so what about, what if we want to get the Hurwitz dichotomy for pi 1, 1 sets? So um, even for Omega, I'm not quite sure about the status, because there's a, a paper by Stern where, uh, in which supposedly it's proved that um, uh, you force over ZFC and you get uh, the Hurwitz dichotomy for um, Omega, for the bare space, mm, uh, for all projective sets. But uh, as far as I know, the, 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 um, this paper is not, uh, it's not known that the proof works. So okay. the people I've talked to think maybe the proof doesn't work. So this seems to be a, a, an open question. Just um, what is, I mean, if you look at the Solovey model, the Hurwitz dichotomy is true. <coughs> but um, so it, uh, if that proof doesn't work, it's, it's open whether the Hurwitz dichotomy can be forced over ZFC without an inaccessible cardinal, even for omega. So then there's the question about the consistency strength. You need an inaccessible office of capital. Okay, thank you. No questions. I think people are focusing on the wine, which is about <laughs> <laughs> so thank, Let us thank the speaker again.